Hello, everybody. Um, so hopefully for something a little bit different, I'll try to keep it entertaining. Uh, I always start off my lessons with dad jokes. Every day there's a joke of the day, so I'll tell some jokes along the way to keep it kind of fun. The cornier the joke, the better it is. So that's my philosophy. Uh, freedom in music is what I'm talking about. Freedom in music with the subtitle, moving away from the composer. I'm a composer, why do I want to get rid of myself? Good question, I won't answer that, but let's talk about freedom in music. Um, freedom in music, music is not free. Uh, for hundreds of years, composers, they have functioned as the center of the musical solar system. But what if music could be free from a composer? Can it be free from a composer? Um, we're used to an equation that says sound, plus a composer equals music. But what if we change that and remove the composer and just did sound plus aleatory and then have music? So aleatory means you're using some type of chance, luck, for creation. Um, so in music, this can be situations where composers loosen their egos and control over what happens. Uh, and there's three basic ways we're gonna do and talk about and do them maybe together on this. Uh, one is called chance. Um, and in this case, the universe is the composer and the universe takes over and makes decisions. Um, second one is improvisation, where performers themselves take over and make decisions. The last one's a little bit harder to explain, but it's, it's process, um, where the composer may set up rules and guidelines but ultimately, mathematics and repetition interactions create the decisions of what happens. Um, so, so to put these techniques into action, I've begun composing a piece. Um, I've done this many times. It's a little bit of a hobby of mine. My favorite one that I've made is called One Night Only, because it only happens one time. You can't do it more than that. But we'll call it One Day Only. This is a new thing. And collectively, Collectively, we're going to free this music from me, the composer. Um, so to, you, to complete this, we will use elements of chance, improvisation, and process to create a new and free listening experience. It will require audience participation. So if you are brave or not brave and just want to have some fun, I'll, I'll be looking for volunteers. So here is so far one day only. It's very boring, very bland. Um, very short, not very interesting, but here's what I've started with. This music is not free, it is under control. So what we wanna do is sort of take it to um, some places. And so let's start with a joke before we do all this. Um, what happened when a composer was removed from a project, they went baroque. <laughs> they went baroque, yes. All right, so chance music, chance, elements of chance. Um, for this part of the, of the process, I brought some dice. And I, I, we're going to use these to do part of the music. And you know, I just bought this set of dice, but when I got them, the two, four, and six were blacked out. It, they're very odd. They're very odd. The two, four, and six were removed. They're very odd. All right, so chance music. This is where the universe plays their role. Um, the universe is entitled to make decisions. So a composer can flip coins. They can draw cards or even roll dice. Um, we often associate this with the composer John Cage. Uh, in the 1960s, he used chants, found objects to create music. Uh, one piece, Music for Changes, uh, was created by dropping straws and using the I Ching to translate those straws into musical decisions. Um, and I Ching translates to Book of Changes, so he did uh, Music for, change, or for Changes. Um, but it actually goes back much further than this. Um, Renaissance composers, tempo was not invented. Tempo markings had not been invented. So the idea of a tempo marking 
was left up to chance to the performers. The, however speed the music was, was up to chance. Um, and even probably the most famous chance music uh, was published in 1792. And it's loosely accredited to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So it's a manuscript that contains over 170 one measure fragments of music. And the person is supposed to roll dice and it puts them into different orders and creates music. Um, and I had to write this down here. The, the manuscript, the fragments, it has the ability to compose 45 quadrillion, 949 trillion, 700 29 billion, 863 million, 571 different musical pieces. And this is from 1792. Um, I have found a website that actually computerized this. And you can go to this website if you just type in Mozart Dice Game. And it digitally does it. So you can play the song. I can stop it, and there's, there's all these different numbers, and I can generate another song because there's so many options. And it will go through chance operations and pick different numbers, and then you can play an entirely new composition. Endless fun. So I'm going to stop that, and we're going to add some chance to this composition. So we're going to roll some dice. All right, so what I have here, we're going to return to one day only, and we're going to use chance to add tempo and rhythm. So I'd like a volunteer if we can have one. Um, we're going to roll two dice to determine the tempo. We have a possibility of rolling 2 through 12. One is not a possibility because there's two dice. Uh, but these numbers are going to translate to tempo. So for instance, a roll of 2 is going to become 20 beats per minute, which is incredibly slow, very, very slow. A roll of 12 would be 120 beats per minute, which would be on the fast side. Uh, does any volunteers want to roll the dice? Anybody? OK, great. Yes. All right. So let's see what happens. Three. So that's going to translate to 30 beats per minute. So we're going to be here for a while, folks. So. <laughs> I'm going to adjust the tempo marking on the iPad, and here is 30 beats per minute of what we have so far. <laughs> what time is dinner? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they can bring it in here for us. The iPad also has digital dice on it, too. And so if you wouldn't mind coming back up, or maybe we can have a different volunteer. Um, yeah, come on back up. We're going to roll dice again on the iPad. And it has this drum machine. Uh, it's going to be digital this time. You don't need that one. Yeah. So it has a dice here and a drum machine. And somehow, mathematically, it's going to create a randomly generated drum track when you hit that at 30 beats per minute. Go ahead. We're adding some interest now. So I'll go ahead and record that so that we have that saved on our system. There's our beats per minute. All right, so that is chance. That's one way that you can free music. As a composer, I probably would never have chosen 30 beats per minute. It's slow, and actually, as for performers, it's very hard to perform music that slowly. So I would never have done that. So that's a, the universe taking over for us. So thank you for, the, thank you for that. Um, let's add improvisation improvisation to this now. This is going to be probably four volunteers for this per portion of improvisation. So let's begin with a joke. Uh, why are birds 
great improvisers. They're always winging it. <laughs> always winging it. All right, improv, improvised music. This is where the performer is allowed to make compositional decisions. Um, in jazz music, for example, there is a moment in every performance where it is the expectation that one or more of the performers will take over and improvise melodies. Um, these improvisations can be controlled by the composer by their choice of rhythm and harmony, but the performer is ultimately in that moment doing what they feel like. Um, so one of the great uh, performers and composers and improviser, let's take a listen to just a little bit of Thelonious Monk. And this is a piano improvisation, about 30 seconds of it, from Round Midnight. Maybe. They got the 30 beats per minute message. There we go. <laughs> So there the composer, who was also Thelonious Monk, was, had pre-control over the rhythms and harmonies, but the improvisation is captured in that moment. So what I'd like to do now, for one day only, is to add piano improvisations. Uh, I'm going to need four volunteers. We're going to mute the other things, so you are free to do what you would like. You can do anything you want. There are no wrong notes. Um, I have the keyboard here set up. You can play random notes. I did this with my children about a hundred times to test this out. There's nothing going to be bad or wrong. You can play short melodies. You can play for the entire time. You have 30 beats per minute, so we have a long time there. Um, you can play one note. You can play no notes. Um, anybody would like to come up and have some fun? Anybody? All right, come on up. Yes, thanks. So you'll hear, you'll hear four beats, and then you can improvise whatever you like for as long as you like. It's starting. No. However long you want to do it. OK. Thank you. I had to stop on that. That was lovely. All right. Any other any other people want to volunteer? Be great to get three more people. I'll do them if I have to, but it would be fun to have some other brave souls. I see some people wanting to come up. Anybody? Oh yes. All right. I'm gonna mute that person and even if you just want to hit like two or three notes, that's okay. It, like it. Short is always great. It doesn't have to be, it be anything you want it to be. Is it started? Not that's yet. That's not the intro. That is the intro. Yes.
stop it there. That's fun. All right, let's go. Maybe another person? Two more? We could do it with two. It'd be nice if we had, a, maybe, Roger, do you want to help out? OK, yeah, come on. There's no such thing as no musical talent. Oh, yes, there is. Just there, me. Let me mute the previous person. And yeah, there we go. You hear four beats, and then you can do whatever. You are free to do whatever you would like. Thank you. One last volunteer? Or we could have more. We could have more than four. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to mute Roger. And you hear four beats, and then you are free to do what you'd like. Perfect. All right. So again, freeing music from the ego of the composer. I am not the solar center system, not the sun anymore. You as a group. And that's how sort of this works as a, a solitude thing. This is, not, this is a community event. Um, oftentimes, composers sit alone on their desk and they're with their pianos. And you imagine Beethoven like banging the piano. This is a different kind of thing. Um, so improvisation, let's do the last component, process. OK, so in process music, it's all about mathematics and repetition. And they're allowed to make the compositional decisions. Um, oftentimes, this means similar music or musics repeating to unveil new rhythms and melodies. Uh, an example of this process piece, it's easy to hear it once I play it for you. Um, is pia uh, Piano Phase by Steve Reich. Uh, he's sort of the, the catalyst of minimalism and repetition. Um, but Reich created a short melody that repeats throughout the entire composition, played by two pianos. After many repetitions, the second piano speeds up until they are one note ahead. And it's this interaction between the two pianos, the two loops, that results in new melodies and new rhythms. So Reich sets up the rules of the process, but then lets the process take over. And whatever happens, happens. Um, so here's a small portion of piano phase. It's a much longer piece of music. We're going to hear sort of the beginning to about 30 seconds of it. But you'll hear repetition and interaction creating new melodies. Maybe not. Let me try that again. process goes on for much longer after that and repeats. Much of Reich's music is about repetition and small variations in those repetitions creating new things. So here's another joke. Uh, one musician said to the other one, we need to record 10 songs. He said this over and over again. We need to record 10 songs. And the other musician said, why are you repeating yourself? He says, you know, just for the record. Need 10 songs just for the record. 
All right, not all the jokes are winners. Not all the jokes. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm not gonna interact with this compositionally, but all I'm going to do is repeat everything. So I'm gonna take the piano thing that we started with, and I'm going to loop it, Steve Reich style. And I'm going to loop the drum machine. And the fascinating thing about these improvisations is they're all of different varying lengths. So as they loop, they're going to interact with each other and create new music beyond that. So I'm looping the first one, I'm looping the second one, looping the third, and looping the fourth. And they're gonna come at you one at a time. So you'll hear each one. And so here is the completion of one day only. Um, hopefully it's something worth listening to. I think it's been fun. So let's at least enjoy that communal experience. We'll do the fade out there. So that's, that's our composition that we've created. Um, so sound plus aleatory creates music. That was what we thought about. Um, but you know, after digging through all this, I'm sure, I, I feel like the, the long answer is we're not that, there yet to remove a composer. Um, without the initial spark of one person's ideas, it's very hard to have the creation of something. Um, if you, even if you got a group of people together to improvise completely on their own, there's probably still some person or people organizing the event with the initial spark. So maybe the better equation is sound plus aleatory plus a composer equals free music. Uh, perhaps free music is not free of the composer, but maybe it is free in the sense of our expectations. What could music be come if it was free from all restrictions and expectations? And I'll leave you with one last joke before we. Uh, why couldn't the string quartet find the composer? Because he was hiding. So thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs>